The words Newtown and Sandy Hook will be forever linked to gun violence. It's been eight months since the deadly school shooting, and in those eight months, tougher gun laws have been put into place. But you might be surprised to hear the demand for guns is through the roof. Poppy Harlow joins us now. Good morning, Poppy. Good morning to you, Carol. Yeah, what we have seen is that the people in Newtown applying for pistol permits has gone up dramatically in those eight months. And, and it's not just Newtown. This is happening across Connecticut. When you look at the numbers and you compare the six months before the Sandy Hook shooting to the six months after, there has been a 53% increase in background checks for people wanting to buy guns. I'm Nancy. Hi. How, How are you doing? doing? Pleased to meet you. She's a grandmother who's about to become a first-time gun owner. Mm -hmm. This way is easier. Nancy Ellis says the new gun laws passed in Connecticut, among the toughest in the country, are a big reason why she's buying her first firearm. Our rights are being slowly infringed upon and that this whole idea of controlling guns has not has come to my back door. In other words, there could be a time when I may never be able to get a firearm. Ellis lived in Newtown for 28 years. Her desire to own a gun is part of a spike in the state. Newtown, vividly remembered for one of the worst gun massacres in U.S. history, is on track this year to double the amount of pistol permits it issued last year. I'm concerned that it can get out of hand. Uh, Nancy Lanza had quite an arsenal, I understand, in her home. You only have two hands. How many guns can you fire at once? Dave Ackert and Monty Frank are members of Newtown Action Alliance, pushing to curb gun violence. There's a perception that the government's going to come and grab all their guns or it's going to not allow them to purchase certain guns. Newtown resident Ryan Delp owns multiple guns but did not want to show them on camera out of respect for the Newtown victims. You went out and you bought another gun after the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary. Why? Uh, that was 100% driven by the legislation that I was anticipating being passed. It's my responsibility to take care of and protect my family. It's hard for Gilles Rousseau to understand as he grieves the loss of his daughter Lauren, killed at Sandy Hook. It hurts in a different way. I had my first dream with my daughter was in the dream uh, just about a week ago. And I said, Lauren is dead. How can she be there? She's dead. What do you think when you see these numbers? It's sad. It's really sad. There's no other words to say it. It makes me sad to think that people will, they feel that they're protecting themselves, but they're just adding to the problem. There was also a surge in gun sales in Colorado following the Aurora movie theater massacre. And after the 2011 mass shooting in Tucson, background checks for gun purchases in Arizona spiked. While Nancy Ellis grieves for the victims of the tragedy in her own backyard, my heart breaks for them. It truly does. For her, this is about protecting her rights. Did the guns cause the tragedy? No. It is the person behind the gun that caused the tragedy. And Carol, you know, we're seeing this nationwide. If you look at the FBI statistics for background checks for people that want to buy guns, they have risen steadily over the past few years, despite these mass shootings. What's interesting to note here is that although since the 70s, the number of people with guns has actually gone down in this country, the amount of guns has gone up because we're seeing people buying multiple guns more and more. And that is really what is concerning those two men that I talked to in Newtown, Dave Ackard and Monty Frank. They're not opposed to guns, but they're worried about what they see as stockpiling of guns and what that could mean after the tragedy that that community went through. Carol? All right. Poppy Harlow reporting live for us this morning. Thank you.